Ja, herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe vom SI Talk. Heute sind wir bei Nevada Copper. Sie wissen, ich habe im Juni schon die Company und ein Interview geführt. Neben mir sitzt der CEO Giulio Bonifacio. Und ja, schauen wir mal einfach, was im Sommer so getan hat. Giulio, thank you to have time for me that we can do an update. Um, there are some major news coming out in the last few weeks, so that's really show the progress uh, in in the project. So maybe you can summarize a little bit what's happened the last three months from from the news side. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Joe, for having me back. Um, last week was a, a significant development. Uh, we uh, passed the land bill through the House of Representatives, and now we expect it to go through the Senate. And in short, what that means is by the end of the year, we should should have a completely passed. Uh, Lyon County land bill, which effectively equates to permits on the large, large open pit, which represents, as, as many of you likely know, you know over or f over four billion pounds of copper, close to a million ounces of gold, and 33 million ounces of silver. And that's based on what we currently know. We do expect it to grow in size. So very, very significant. There's also, since the last time we spoke, there's been um, a good level of consolidation activity in our space. Uh, two copper companies have been acquired. One being Lumina was acquired by First Quantum. Approximate valuation was about $500 million. And the other company, which is very comparable to our project in terms of the size, was Augusta was acquired by HUD Bay. And uh, a simple valuation matrix, um, they were acquired at about 12 cents per proven and probable reserve pounds. We currently trade at about three cents. And the question is, well, why? Um, you know, it really gets back to our ability to, to get the land bill passed. We think when that happens, mm -hmm. um, you'll see a significant improvement in valuation. And the markets have been a bit challenged here, frankly, in our sector, and, and that, uh, and especially here over the last couple of weeks, but we do think that that's going to turn the corner. Copper prices are still uh, within a very healthy range for us as a company. Mm -hmm. This is the, in my view, one of the best projects out there, and it is currently in construction. And so if your viewers have an opportunity, please, you know, please go to our website. There's a virtual tour. You can get a sense of, you know, how far along we've advanced the project and, and the company. Um, And so for the rest of the year, we're really going to focus in on, on sort of how we deal with the remainder of stage one, how we move that forward to production. We expect to be in production by 2016, as well as stage two, the large open pits. And so, um, you know, as I said, very, very big asset, big project, very well located. Uh, Nevada is, a, is, is without a doubt one of the best mm -hmm. mining jurisdictions in the world. It's got a low risk profile that, that goes with that as well. Uh, and so we think that... Um, That will bode well, and we're pretty much on schedule with respects to what we um, what we discussed last time. Uh, you answered the most question what I what I have, but um, I will ask in this way: um, sure. if you are a foreign company and you're looking at other copper company, when you think is the best time to buy a company like you? Well, you know, I think because the markets have changed um, so dramatically, I, th I think relative to Nevada Copper mm -hmm. and, and Pumpkin Hollow, once the land bill uh, is concluded, and as I said, very comfortable with, with saying that we think that's very likely by the end of the year, uh, you know, no guarantees. You're dealing with mm -hmm. Washington Congress, uh, as we all know, and it's not as, you know, it, it gives rise to some, some challenges, but we're very optimistic that this will now happen, and, and what just happened last week was a, a significant mm -hmm. development towards towards that result. We think once that happens, it does broaden our ability, and there's a, there's a lot of different companies that have signed confidentiality agreements that are looking at Nevada Copper very closely. From our perspective, um, you know, I'm the founder of the company. It's really about value. What's the appropriate valuation? We, we do know that You know, there's a value that's attributable to Nevada Copper. If you look at the number of analysts that have mm -hmm. provided coverage, we recently um, had coverage by Desjardins. We're expecting another firm to come out. In, in each and every one of those reports, they've targeted anywhere from $5 to $7 per share. So, you know, as we encroach an appropriate value, if there's an opportunity, and we think that will happen on the back of the line bill, uh, that, that would be probably, in my view, the likely time that you mm -hmm. would see that sort of occurrence. Is this uh, the major goal from Nevada or is it your major goal to bring it in production? Uh, you know, I think, um, I think, I get asked that a lot. I think really it's about adding value. As you add mm -hmm. value, those things occur. I, I think it's foolish to think that uh, anytime you start a company with that as your primary objective, I think it's a flawed strategy. I mm -hmm. think what you need to do is continue to advance it, develop mm -hmm. it, de-risk it, 
as you do that, you'll have success. That's always been my my approach, and I, you know we've had a good level of success with that, uh, and we'll continue to do that. But the markets are, um, and and no secret for your viewers, far more challenging now than they ever have been. Mm-hmm. But um, fortunately for us, we have a project that 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 hangs together and is going into production and has mm-hmm. some real size to it. So uh, just continue to move it forward, and as and when those discussions mature to a certain satisfactory point, then mm-hmm. then you know that's a that's a real possibility. Uh, one personal question: What is your personal feeling about the copper price or production in the in the future? Um, good, very good question. I think um, you know what what we see. Uh, I think what what you need to look at in, in our sector is if you um, look at precious metal prices and you look at copper prices. Copper copper prices has held have held nicely within a range. Mm-hmm. I don't think that changes dramatically. It's it you know it's in the three hundred five, three ten level typically. Uh, if you look at 16 and 17 i think you'll you know there's a strong fundamental belief that those prices will will get a lot closer to the 375 four dollar range that gets back to the supply demand fundamentals mm-hmm. and by the way that is when nevada copper is in production so you know we'll benefit from that from that up, up rise or uptick but regardless the the project that we have uh, makes money at this price point and mm-hmm. so uh, you know we're we're still well positioned but we do think that copper prices will will move in a, in a positive mm-hmm. direction here uh, to to summarize what what is the uh, calculated all in cost for per pound of, of copper what you produce well incorporating the um, sustaining cost um, and op cost you're probably looking and I'll give you a range because it just mm-hmm. changed throughout the uh, throughout the mine life sort of in the dollar uh, dollar 75 range okay in around that range and uh, Now that that will potentially improve uh, if we have success with our, our drilling, and once you go underground, we're <coughs> stage one is 75 million pounds of copper per year, mm-hmm. uh, scheduled to be in commercial production in 2016. If we have a good level of success with the drilling from underground, and we think we will, and improve the grade profile, that will effectively mm-hmm. lower lower the all-in costs. Um, and again, that has nothing to do with the the large open pit, which also has good mm-hmm. open extent and. You know, there's presentation material that you can look at that gives you a sense of why that's the case. The underground, just as a reminder of, of sorts, was not has not been drilled since 2010, and the open pit has you know recently been drilled in 2012 and demonstrated, and we saw a significant significant increase in the reserve. Okay, uh, thank you, Julio, for the for the update. Um, good luck in by the um, uh, which. Congress? No, in Congress you do. Uh, you need the Senate. The Senate. Now we're waiting Senate. for the Senate to... Uh, Good to luck there. And politician is always tough to deal. We know this uh, in Europe very well, especially with this Russian-Ukrainian thing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, good luck. But you are much better positioned now than two, three months ago. Very much so. Thank, thanks very much for taking the time to, to get the update. Yeah, it's so it's a good update from Nevada Copper. Sehr interessant. Wie gesagt, das Wichtigste ist jetzt, dass eigentlich der die Genehmigungsphase für das ganze Open Pit, der große Weg schon gegangen ist. Es geht jetzt nur mal eine Genehmigung ab, die es im Herbst erwartet wird, ähm, beziehungsweise im, im Jahreswechsel. Und dann ist eigentlich ähm, ja, das in trockenen Tüchern. Meine Frage war ja auch darum, wann wäre eigentlich der beste Zeitpunkt, wo äh, eine Übernahme stattfinden konnte, weil wie wir schon im Gespräch gesagt haben, sind gerade vor kurzem zwei Übernahmen ähm, gewesen in dem Markt. Und ähm, ja, das wäre genau dann danach der beste Zeitpunkt, wo eben ähm, ja, andere Companies eigentlich äh, zuschlagen. Und äh, das ergibt uns auch natürlich nur eine Chance, dementsprechend jetzt bei Nevada Copper dabei zu sein. Das war das Update von Nevada Copper und wir sehen uns in Kürze. Tschüss.